All right, guys, so now that we have the GPX data downloaded from Strava, let's just take a closer look at it in QGIS and just see what kind of cool stuff we can do. So um, if we just um, drag in a GPX file, you can see there's all these different layers that are associated with the GPX file. Um, so let's just bring them all in. And you can see I'm going to turn all the layers off. And let's look at them one by one. So the first one doesn't even do anything. That doesn't do anything. So track points, that has a lot of data in it. So this is basically, I think every second, the GPS is, is recording where you are. Uh, we have tracks. So this is kind of like a line instead of a point. Um, not really interested in that one. So I'm mostly interested in the track points. So let's just remove all these other ones. No, we don't want route points. All right, so track points. Okay, cool. So what else can we do? Let's take a look at the attribute table. And just look at what kind of data we have here. So you notice we have a bunch of um, we have elevation data time. I'm looking for like a lat long and I'm not seeing it. So I'm going to try to figure out how I can get... Um, Add X, Y, here we go, add X, Y fields to layer. So uh, obviously this data has um, X, Y data in it. Otherwise it wouldn't know where to put it on a map. It's just not being displayed in our attribute table. So uh, I'm going to do this add X, Y fields to layer uh, tool. So I'm just selecting that track points and just click run, leave everything default and close. And it looks like it made a new field or a new layer um, that added those fields I'm guessing so let's see here so way at the end here we have XY so cool so now we have lat long um, so one of the other uh, things I usually like to do is actually display um, display it based on like elevation like so I want the higher values to be um, displayed with a darker color so I'm just gonna add this map so you see here we have, um, it's just all green. So that's not very helpful. Um, so how we can do this is we have to uh, change the symbology of it, which is basically how it's displayed, like how these little markers look. So if we go to, um, where's symbolic properties, symbology, instead of a single symbol here, let me turn this map off actually, it's a little distracting. Um, if we change it from single symbol to graduated, so that means we want something, we want th these points to change gradually based on some something. Um, so we want the value to be based on elevation here. And we need to um, click classify. This is basically gonna break it up into these different, so like what color, what values equal what colors basically. Um, so this is good. Um, so a lighter um, color will equal a smaller elevation. So if we could just click apply and okay, you can see here that now it's, it's symbolized based on elevation. So, so it's obviously higher here. And then as it goes um, towards the water, that makes sense, it's, it's lower elevation. Um, so that's cool. Um, <laughs> that's usually just what I do in, in QGIS. Um, one other thing I might make a video about is how we can convert all these GPX files to shape files. Um, shape files are a little bit more friendly to work with. Um, not really in QGIS. Well, I guess in QGIS, but uh, in ArcGIS, definitely. Um, and I recently made a video about how we can convert it using ArcPy for ArcGIS. But um, let's figure out how we can do that with um, with QGIS or, or not QGIS, but um, I guess open source software. Uh, instead of having to use ArcGIS. So uh, I think I'll cover that in the next video. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.